So I clicked start recording. Perfect. Alrighty, everybody, welcome. So just so you know, I am going to record this um, quick webinar so that we can share information with other people who aren't able to attend today. But first, I want to start off by thanking everybody for being here. Um, this is something that the Nutrient Management Farmer Education Grant Program hasn't necessarily done before. Um, but being new myself and having quite a few newer uh, awardees in the past couple of years, I thought it would be beneficial to kind of get us all together, um, chat through some of the program expectations, uh, due dates, uh, forms, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so we'll we'll kind of start going through that and then towards the end I am going to have kind of a share and learn session so it'd give everybody a chance to kind of talk through um, some of the good things with the program and give me some advice on things that we can fix um, and then just you know talk amongst yourselves I have a few questions um, that will kind of start the conversation with um, but if you guys have any questions at all we'll start off with those uh, so I'm going to start sharing my screen here so we can see my presentation. If someone can just let me know that they can see my slides, that would be awesome. Yes, we can okay. see it. Thank you. All righty. So kind of as I mentioned, we're going to walk through what our grant expectations are. We're going to talk about the NMFE curriculum, which is going to be an awesome resource for um, anybody who is putting on an NMFE training. Uh, we're going to talk about training laptops, train the trainer, resources available, and then as I mentioned, we're going to dive into that share and learn session um, here at the end. So there are some brand new people on here with us, so I did want to go over a brief overview of what um, nutrient management farmer education grants are. So we have two different tiers. We're going to start talking about tier one first. So tier one limited to $20,000 per application. Unless you have multiple groups or entities kind of coming together, um, for instance, we do have some counties that work together. So we have, I think, five counties um, together that uh, apply for an NMFE grant as one operation. Um, and with each additional entity, you are able to apply for an additional $10,000. Um, with tier one grants, the farmers or participants that go through your training are required to have a nutrient management plan at the end of it in order to be able to receive some of those reimbursements. So that could be a soil sampling reimbursement, a participation stipend, um, you know, whatever those look like uh, based off of your NMFE budget, uh, that nutrient management plan should be completed and a checklist should be turned in in order for them to re receive their payments. This is something specific to counties currently right now, but with a tier one grant, counties can request up to an additional $2,000 in funding so that they can get laptops in their office. And that helps with just, you know, having farmers and producers come in and being able to set them down at a laptop that isn't your own work laptop um, so that they can work on SNAP Plus and, you know, reach out if they if they need help. Tier two grants they are limited to $2,500 per application, and they're a little bit more education-based in the sense that producers and farmers that come and attend your different events, they're not required to have a nutrient management plan at the end of it, um, but they're also not receiving you know, mon monetary stipends for going through the, the tier two grant. A lot of times I, I see that um, soil probes are being bought, uh, manure scales are being bought, or it's, funding to get some snacks at a field event or funding to help put on a field event. Um, you know, it, I've really seen some creative stuff come through there. So in an instance where you're trying to get more nutrient management on the ground um, and just wanted to have an event where you can talk about that and share what nutrient management is and maybe do a soil sampling field day where you demonstrate soil sampling, a tier two grant is a great option for that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about documents and forms. So what sort of documentation is needed? When are things due and where can I find them? I guess I was one day late. I should have had this on the 15th because that's when our deadline is for a lot of stuff for the NMFE grant, but that's okay. Um, most of you guys have turned in everything that we need to have turned in anyways. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is this reimbursement form probably one of the most important things uh, for you guys to be aware of. It is posted on the DATCAP webpage, 
So if you ever need to find it, um, I've, I think I've also sent it out like two or three times. Thank you for everybody who's helped with edits. Um, it was a process getting the form updated, so I appreciate everybody's commentary back on it. Um, but when you go to turn it in, feel free to email it to myself or that nice long email, dadcap soil and watershed management at wisconsin.gov. Um, either one that you send it to, I will receive. Feel free to send it to both. Um, I generally like to send out an email right back saying, hey, just so you know, I have received this and I'm reviewing it or hey, I have received it and I'm approving it. Um, just so that you guys are aware and there's a nice paper trail for everybody involved. So with reimbursements, you're allowed to submit two reimbursements per grant period. Final reimbursement submission was due yesterday, so February 15th, um, and I got quite a few of them in, so good job, everybody. Um, and so documentation that is required with a reimbursement form. This has been a highly discussed uh, topic this past year, uh, mostly because I was given improper guidance of what to expect with um, reimbursement forms. Um, and so I appreciate everybody's questions and patience through this process. So with reimbursement forms, the NMFE grant is falls underneath a category of a single audit system. So with that, you guys are only required to turn in a 590 checklist in order to receive reimbursement for soil sampling for um, farmers, manure samples, analysis and participation stipends. So in that instance, I don't necessarily need receipts showing me that you went out and bought juice and donuts for breakfast. They're great. And if you, you know, have to do it on your own end already, feel free to send them. You know, I'm, I'm never going to turn any of that documentation away. But the only thing that I absolutely need when the reimbursement form is turned in is the 590 checklist so that your participants it shows me that they, your participants have completed their plan and therefore can receive the, the stipends uh, that they've been promised. OK. The reimbursement form does have a couple little glitches and something that I want to educate everybody on is that when you're filling it out, make sure you're putting zeros in the categories that you're not requesting reimbursement in. There's calculations in this form, and if those zeros aren't imported into all of those cells, the equations add up to be very funky and they just don't make sense. So a lot of times I've gotten emails saying, hey, Andrea, down at the bottom of the form, none of the numbers are adding up. If you were to go back and add zeros into those cells that you are not requesting a reimbursement in, it should be fixed. I'm not gonna promise that it is, because we're still finding some things, but 98% uh, of the time uh, it should be fixed. The one time where we're going to still see some bugs, and that's because I need to figure out how to write the equation a little bit differently, is if you reach out to me and say, hey, Andrea, I have more funds in my soil testing category um, that I'm not going to be using, would I be able to move those into the participation stipend section so that I could pay um, you know, an additional farmer for coming through the training. 10 out of 10 times I'm going to say yes in those situations. I just need documentation on that. But what's going to happen is you're going to say that your budget award, um, you know, you, it really didn't change. So when you start putting overages in the participation stipend for what you were actually awarded, the amount of funds remaining by category isn't able to compute negative numbers so then it gets kind of confusing but don't worry about it i take care of it on my end and, and clean it all up so again most important thing making sure that we're putting zeros in the boxes that we're not um, asking for reimbursement in so that our equation works as well as we can hope it does all right we're going to go through a couple frequently asked questions to the reimbursement form and if i don't touch on your question i will stop and ask if there's anybody that does have questions in re in regards to the reimbursement form so can farmer participants receive a participation stipend if they come back through a refresher course so this question means that they've come through and learned how to write a nutrient management plan and then let's say that they come back through in you know three to four years to receive the refresher course DATCAP DATCAP's opinion is that yes, they can receive the participation stipend again, but I will leave it up to the counties to use your own discretion in deciding. So I'm not going to tell you you have to change your program if it's you're doing it you know, one way or the other, but just know that if participants are coming back through the NMFE program, they are allowed to receive a, a participation stipend as well as the soil sampling stipends multiple times. 
Can I request administrative payments if farmer participants pay tuition to attend our NMFE course? So no, with um, having farmers pay a tuition, that tuition cost should be covering any administrative needs that there are. Can counties receive administrative payments for staff time? Um, this has been a new one that uh, previously counties were able to receive $4,000 towards administrative um, efforts. Um, but since the NMFE funding is coming from our SWIRM allocation, um, I, Kim is much better at all the rules, but in SWIRM allocation, it says that you are not allowed to receive um, funds to go towards county staff time. So with that, that answer is going to be no. Counties cannot receive administrative payments for staff time. Uh, but we've had some really great conversations where people have kind of started asking some additional questions and subcontracting administrative tasks is allowed. So if you work with a, a nonprofit or some other group that helps you put on your nutrient management trainings, you can still request that you receive a $4,000 administrative payment or however much money. As long as I receive um, a check showing me that you have paid your administrative subcontractor, I will be able to reimburse counties um, for that administrative payment. Can I move funds to a different category if I over or underspent in another category? So we just touched on this, but yes, most definitely. All I ask is that you email me before submitting a reimbursement so that I can keep track of things on my end. Um, that paper trail is huge. And so just being able to take note that you're moving funds from one category to another. Like I said before, I'm going to approve it 10 out of 10 times, um, but it's just important that I be able to keep track of that on my end. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right now. These are all of the FAQs that I have related to the reimbursement form. Is there anybody out there that has an, an additional question that they would like to ask? If not, we can wait till the end too. And if we have questions that come up, quick, feel free quick to question, ask them. Like, yeah. yeah, quick question, Andrea. Um, so it looks like, and I was just trying to pull it up, but it wasn't successful here. Have you changed the reimbursement form to remove that? You had that um, couple lines talking about itemization. You and I talked about that in length. And that that's, is that not on the form anymore? So currently, um, because I didn't want to update and change things mid reimbursement season, currently it, the itemization breakdown words across the top of the form are still present on the one that's posted on the website. I do have an updated copy on my end. And now that the reimbursement season is kind of done, I will make sure to get that new updated one posted on the website so that it's not telling you in there that I need an itemized uh, list of documentation. OK, do you foresee that changing at all in the future? Because, you know, you and I talked about that at length again. And will there be you talked about now the single audit system? Do you think that'll stay that way and and we won't need to provide that information in the future? Or do you foresee that changing? I'm going to heavily rely on Kim to see if she knows more about the single audit system. I have only been told that there is a single audit system and that that deems you guys eligible to not have to provide receipts. Um, Kim. Do you know if that's something that has been around for years and it's something that's probably going to stick? I assume it will stay. I I wouldn't mind it to go back to the way it was, but I don't get to um, <laughs> sway the legal mind um, on what I think. But at this point, it, it seems like it will. And I will make sure that if anything does change, that there is ample explanation of what expectations will be. <clears throat> All right, thanks. Yeah, great questions. Anything else? I have one real quick. Yeah. Um, the in-kind, so we write a budget for our in-kind or direct support. Is that something that we need to track on a spreadsheet? I mean, you don't require it, right? Correct. So the only places that it is required, um, dot, well, in your application, you say that, you know, you're going to be contributing this much in kind. And that does help us in our review of applications to kind of categorize people in, in different sections. The other time that it is important is in the final report. And that's where you can just document that, yes, you know, a quick description of what that in kind was and the amount is sufficient for me. So, again, you know, that spreadsheet is super great, not absolutely needed on my end. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you yeah. for asking. Sure, and that, I'll say one more thing, Andrea, not to hijack the meeting here. Um, the I, I found, and you and I discussed that, that we didn't need to provide a, the itemization, but I think sometimes that documentation, in order to do the in-kind match properly, the only way to do it is to keep those kinds of records. So I ended up by default doing that anyway. Just for your own end of things. Yeah, because right? because on the final report, you have to report in-kind uh, match. Um, so in order to do that, there's really no other way other than to keep records, especially in, maybe we're in a little different situation because we do have the five counties, so it may be a little more technical and difficult than than others experience. <clears throat> All right, the final report template leads into a perfect segue. So this I was finally able to get posted on the NMFE webpage. I'm it's been a process and I appreciate everybody's patience throughout this, but the final report template is now uh, posted on the NMFE webpage. If you have not had a chance to turn it in, please continue to turn those in. Um, as I state here later that all comments and suggestions truly help me with program development. Um, I am brand new to my position. I'm willing to hear all comments and concerns and tweak and make things uh, a little bit different so that we can continue this program and that it is continuing to be beneficial for you and for the farmers involved. So same kind of ordeal. It's due on February 15th following the grant period. So technically yesterday, but please, if you have not sent it in, feel free to um, send those in um, and, and send them right to my email. Or again, you can use that DATCAP email, but my email is just perfect. Uh, I do have a frequently asked question uh, regarding final reports. If you do not end up spending any grant funds, do you still need to fill out the final report? Yes. It doesn't need to be filled out because a lot of the questions in there you're not going to be able to answer if you didn't end up spending any funds, but I would still like you to submit one stating what changed and why the funds went unspent. So I had a couple instances where COVID uh, truly affected their, their ability to even hold classes. So in that instance, it was just them uh, doing a quick fill out of the final report stating that funds were not spent due to COVID restrictions in our county. And, and that's sufficient for me, just so that I can, again, keep track of a paper trail. So any quick questions on the final report before I jump into the extension request? Um, there is a question towards the end that I'll ask about the final report, but as some of you might have noticed, I did include a, a place for you to enter in the farmer's names, whether it's a new plan and how many acres um, are associated with that farmer grower. And that's just going to be so that I can better track on my end the names of the farmers going through the program so that I can help you guys kind of keep track of that every four years this farmer needs to be recertified. Um, I did have someone ask a great question on if they could just send me an Excel spreadsheet of that information that they keep on their own end instead of retyping it into the final report. 100% yes. Please, I don't want you doing double duty if you do not have to. So as long as I have that information in one form or the other, I'm perfectly OK with that. But we'll we'll touch more on that here towards the end of my questions. Anything before I jump into extension requests then? OK, so this one is a lie. It's not found on the DATCAP NMFE webpage just yet, but I promise that uh, in time for next year it will be. Um, it is due December 31st of each grant year and again it gets emailed to me uh, and this is where you are able to request rollover or extension of your funds for one additional year so in this sense people were extending their 2021 funds so that they could use them again in 2022 okay uh, i've received a couple questions in regards to hey i haven't submitted my final reimbursement yet and i'm still kind of unsure of what exactly that amount is going to be what if I overestimate or what if I underestimate my extension request um, once reimbursements are paid out? How can I fix that or, or how does that look? Most definitely. Um, I, I am in the mindset that I would rather see you overestimate how much money you need to extend. So for instance, um, I had a county put a reimbursement in or, or an extension in for $12,000, but then they ended up buying a laptop. So then their extension went from 12,000 down to 10,000 and that was perfectly fine because they requested an extension of 12 and then once that reimbursement came in, I was able to alter that um, and chat with them and let them know, hey, just so you're aware, it's down to $10,000 because your previous reimbursement. 
So in that sense, I, I want to make sure that we're not losing any of your money and that you're able to use it, um, you know, either in your grant year or into your extended period. So always be kind of overestimating and I will be in um, in communication with you if something on your reimbursement form doesn't line up with your previous extension amount. Any questions on this extension template? Okay. So another topic, COVID, we have hoped and hoped that it would be going away, um, but it's still here and there are definitely still um, different restrictions in each and every county and each and every uh, tech school that is helping implement uh, NMFE. So due to COVID, I have had the question on are one on one sessions allowable? Most definitely. If you are still able to get someone to come through and meet with you and work on their plan and get it updated or, or get it written to you know, start a plan, one on one sessions are perfectly allowable. If they do not feel comfortable coming into a group setting, I completely understand. Um, it does allow for a little bit more personalized training where you can really dive into more farm specifics, which is great, um, but it also can be time consuming. So, I, I will say that one on one sessions are completely allowed, but again, on, on your end, as the person sitting down and working with everybody, uh, it can be more time consuming than doing a couple group sessions here and there. So again, I just want to uh, say that as long as participants do turn in their plan, even if it's in a one on one session, they are allowed to receive those reimbursements. All right, so this is more for um, we're, we're kind of stepping away from all the documentations and the forms and now we're going to kind of dive into more about resources and how to what things are available to help you host your class. So the nutrient and pest management team has put together. The NMFE curriculum. And currently um, I'm going to refer to the stuff that you guys are aware of as the old curriculum. Um, I have had Mimi Broski post it on the web so you no longer have to call down and request a flash drive to be sent up to you. Um, if you go to this link and I promise I'll share my PowerPoint with everybody at the end of this presentation, um, but if you go to this link you will be able to find PowerPoints in reference to nitrogen or phosphorus or soil testing. Um, I will state that they're a little bit older um, they may look a little bit outdated, but a lot of the information is really, really quite solid and can be very helpful when you're putting together um, your nutrient management trainings. So this is now posted on the web and you can access it through this link. Um, there are also, I think, some one page handouts about soil health or cover crops. Um, there's some videos in there that you can use. Um, it's it's a ton, a ton, a ton of information. Super, super great. Um, but I'm really, really excited to announce that we do have a new curriculum. It's virtual based. It's step by step, self paced, available for anybody to access at any time of the day. So I see a little bit of potential with this. I see the potential where um, you know we could have the class sessions virtual for NMFE and then they come and meet in person to go through more of just the SNAP Plus side of things. Um, I will take note that this is not 100% complete. We're still working on putting together some modules and some video and content yet, but I have gotten the official approval to allow you guys to take a peek at it. So again, that link that's posted there I will share, um, but feel free to browse and kind of utilize any of the material that is there. Um, I will definitely keep everybody in the loop as soon as it's 100% finished and um, up and rolling and functioning for um, farmers and uh, producers to, to go through the self-paced course. Um, I know I'm going to get questions about, well, it's virtual, so that means they have to have internet connection, right? Yes, but the NPM team has kind of thought ahead and they have, um, once they have the virtual platform all set up, they have made it so that that virtual platform will fit on a USB drive. So as long as people have access to a computer and there will be a process in which you guys will be able to request USB um, drives, um, they will be able to uh, go through the virtual step by step self paced training themselves. As long as you can import that USB stick into their computer, they will have access to this new curriculum. 
So it's really new. It's exciting. I I am looking for any and all feedback from you guys on this, and I hope you guys have the chance to hop on there and, and see what they've been working on. Um, uh, myself and Cody Calkins, my counterpart at DATCAP, uh, have been helping out with some more of like the rules and logistics um, with some of the videos, but truly I have to give all the credit to the Nutrient and Pest Management team. Um, Mimi Broski, Scott Sturgill, Dan Smith, Dan Marzu, Colby Grant and Jamie Patton and uh, Kevin Shelley have put a lot of time into this and the content is fun. I think it's engaging. Um, there's, you know, some videos of people being out in the field uh, and I'm really, really hoping that you guys enjoy this and I hope that it also kind of allows you a little bit more freedom with your classes where you guys have when you have people come in in person, uh, it can be focused a lot more on the SNAP plus side of things. Any questions on the curriculum before I jump to the next slide? Okay. Laptops. So DATCAP has, oh, I don't know, 25 to 30 laptops available for NMFE classes. I also have a couple wireless MiFi devices. They're basically like hotspots. Um, so if you do have poor internet in your locations, I can, um, you know, get you guys a couple of my fives. Uh, the only way that you can get these training laptops is reaching out to me and saying, hey, do you have uh, laptops available for this day? And I'll look at my schedule and I will say yes, and we'll work together to get those laptops to your location. Um, Jamie Patton uh, with the NPM team, she's the Northeast Regional Specialist. She's based in Shawano, Wisconsin. And she generally has two to three MiFi's and 10 laptops over on the east side of the state. Um, and so if you are more located on the east side of the state, I might have you um, reach out to Jamie to kind of organize that. Just logistically, it'll be easier to get laptops over to you. Um, but please know that these are here for you guys to use. And um, I have one, uh, a wagon of them stored in my in my house at home. So um, central Wisconsin, we have a wagon and then we also have another wagon down in uh, Madison. So make sure you guys know that these are available to you. I know a lot of you have some really great connections with some of the tech schools and their computer labs, and that's great. That's awesome. I love hearing that. Um, but if you still do have an issue meeting the needs of with computers, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Oh no, we froze. There we go. All right, train the trainer. What is train the trainer? Well, it is um, basically me meeting with the staff who are implementing nutrient management farmer education uh, trainings to make sure that you guys are aware and know what needs to be taught in these classes. And so there's going to be um, a couple new staff members that we have joining us, which is great. I'm so excited to work with you guys, but please reach out um, if you just feel like you're in over your head and don't even know where to start with putting on a nutrient management training, uh, please reach out to me. I would love to go through SNAP Plus with you. I would love to walk through uh, the nitrogen cycle and all of that fun stuff um, and really kind of give you a step-by-step -step access to different resources. Um, that is available upon request. Uh, I'm not going to mandate that everybody who has been doing NMFE for quite a while to go through a train the trainer event. Um, but if there's interest, please let me know and we can work on putting something together or I can do it one on one. And the main reason behind this is that I'm one person and I'm supposed to help everybody out in the state and I am trying my best. I love traveling. I love getting out and seeing all of you guys. Um, but I really rely on each one of you to be able to help me in nutrient management education for the state. Uh, you guys are truly my first and foremost comrades on the ground. Um, you know, you guys have the relationships with the farmers and, and those are so, so important. Um, and so in that instance, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I would love to be able to come out and help everybody, but there's a lot of times where nutrient management training season is kind of in full swing right now. And so I'm currently sitting in Marquette County helping out with a, a training today. I had to step away, but um, I'm going to do my best to help you guys all out. Um, definitely my focus is going to be on some of the newer um, NMFE awardees who haven't had the opportunity to figure out bugs and stuff as they go, um, but please do not ever hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, if I'm available, I would love to come down and or travel north uh, to help anyone out with their trainings. Does not want to advance. 
All right, so I've talked a little bit about the nutrient pest management program, but I just wanted to make everybody more aware of it. So there are regional specialists and they are also some of the best uh, comrades that I have for helping with nutrient management in the state of Wisconsin. So I listed their names before. Um, the green sections here on the right are kind of their territories. They do end up traveling out of those territories a lot of different times. Um, but when you know looking for nutrient management help, um, they kind of have it broken out into the northwest or north central and northeast. And you can come down here and, and see out who exactly is in each of those regions and reach out um, to them. It also gives you a little bit more background information on them where they have additional expertise in, you know, say cover crops or soil health, um, really whatever. They all have their kind of own little niches and they're fabulous. They are fabulous in helping out um, to put on nutrient management trainings and um, they're the ones, that, you know, helping put together that curriculum for us as well. So huge thank you goes out to them. I do not want to forget, though, um, our UW Extension folks, our, our ag agents in, in different counties and locations throughout the state. Those have also been a wonderful resource for NMFE program and uh, a huge thank you goes out to them as well. Uh, I know you guys have all felt the pressure of having six farmers sitting in the room staring at you waiting for help with SNAP Plus and the more bodies that you can have present in the room helping people through their nutrient management plan, uh, the better. And I know the farmers appreciate the help as well. All right, so just a quick brief um, go through these resources again. Um, the NMFE curriculum, there's the old curriculum that is located on the web where you can pull up PowerPoints and fact sheets. There is the new curriculum, which is going to be a virtual web based program, but um, when the time comes and it's fully launched, we will be able to request USB sticks so that people can do it who do not have internet access. Train the trainer. I am more than available uh, to sit down to help you kind of figure out how you want to navigate your NMFE program. Um, the NPM team, as I said, is a great resource. And then, um, uh, yeah, just dad cap with uh, being here and helping ask questions. I heavily rely on Kim Carlson, who's on the call as well, to help with the financial side of this grant. Um, and so there we're all well, Kim's not new, but I've been I'm fairly new, so I appreciate everybody's patience in this and um, getting to answer everybody's questions. Kim has been kind of my go to for that. All right, so we got through a lot of the material that I wanted to get through. But now I, I want to leave time for a, a share and learn session. Uh, we have well seasoned NMFE applicants on the call. We have some new NMFE, NMFE applicants on the call. I kind of want to have a discussion of what works, what doesn't work. Um, I want this to be an opportunity for you guys to ask questions of each other um, or of myself. And so I was just going to see if there were any burning questions right now. I do have a few of my own that I can put up, but if there are any questions, feel free to open up and, and start asking. All right, I'll start the conversation here. OK, so this is a question for some of our well seasoned NMFE awardees and you can determine whether you're well seasoned or not. Um, but what advice would you give to a newer first time awardee or in general, you know, just what is some advice you would give to someone who's, you know, really starting to to bring nutrient management to their to their area and whether that be through NMFE or, you know, just nutrient management implementation. Anyone want to jump in on that? I'll go. <laughs> so my advice, my advice is if others know, know um, um, we're a five county, five county region um, that started uh, off kind of uh, doing uh, things each individually. And um, I think partnerships go a long way, not just with with different counties, but also with um, other like UW Extension, Nutrient Pest Management Program, the local uh, technical colleges um, try to build as many partner relationships as you can. It eases the, 
the amount of work um, and especially when we're in class we typically have anywhere from nine to twelve instructors that can help out so um, from from year to year depending on um, involvement so my advice as a more seasoned uh, grant awardee uh, area would be that you know build those relationships and partnerships with anybody you can um, even if you can get any private sector individuals um, we haven't had anybody teach before but it seems like at least at least you know pretty much every year we get um, somebody from the private sector that kind of comes in and watches or audits the class or takes the class to see how things are done so that's a way to engage those private sector individuals too to, to what you're actually working on that's awesome thank you anyone else do some newer awardees have questions about how um, the nutrient management uh, farmer education grant works or how to really kind of get started? I have a question for you. This is Ashley. I was wondering if you don't get any farmer to create a nutrient management plan by the end of the grant, um, are you still eligible to be reimbursed for your events or trainings that you hosted? Yes, so um, the only things that we wouldn't obviously be able to reimburse for would be soil sampling, mm -hmm. um, participation stipends, and um, manure sample analysis. But if you have costs associated to getting some snacks or, or beverages uh, for the training, um, or if you had to buy, you know, printed materials or folders, Yes, please just make a note and let me know. Hey, you know, this is my situation. Sadly, I've worked really hard and I haven't gotten anybody to complete a plan, but I still have these expenses. Um, I am more than willing to work with you on those. Great question. Thank you. And I have a second question for anyone who's out there. Um, one of the struggles that I'm having up here in Douglas County is that farmers don't want to commit the time to going out and sampling their soil. So I'm wondering if anyone has creative solutions to that issue. Thank you. I guess maybe I'll rephrase that question. Currently, do you um, have a lot of farmers who are sampling on their own or do you have farmers that are having co-ops or soil labs go out and pull samples themselves or have have someone else pull the samples for them i should say i'm sorry right now most farmers who are planning try to plan are planning to do it themselves i do have one farmer in the county who pulled their who hired someone to pull samples but i don't think there's a lot of local resources even to get someone to do it and i'm not sure even what they're charging to come to this location and put a plan together for someone or just pull soil samples. Yeah, I I definitely think we can have a conversation. Ashley, um, I have quite a few connections with soil samplers throughout the state, and I've talked to some of them already to see if they'd be interested in coming up to your area if you were able to line up a couple days of sampling for them. And they said that they would be. So if some of the problem is that they don't want to pull the samples themselves, I can work with you a little bit more closely to get people to come up and actually do soil sampling for them. And obviously they have charges of their own that I'm not aware of, but mm -hmm. we could at least get some bodies up there to, to pull some samples for you guys. Okay. Thank quick, you. Qu quick question, Ashley. Is it a, a is it a matter of they're complaining that it's so expensive the soil test? Do you think? No, it's the time commitment to go out there and okay. get on themselves. That's All right. Yeah. The issue. Because because we get that of oh it's so expensive, but if they really look at in the scheme of things, it's really inexpensive. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. If so I we try, we always, yeah, we try to dispel that myth about the cost of things. Um, um, but you know, if I'm assuming in the grant you've got um, the soil testing as a reimbursable item, so mm -hmm. hopefully that would be an incentive, but maybe not enough to to inspire action. Yeah, yeah, if that's the issue I'm running into. It's the, their time of going out there and grabbing all the samples. Unless they have some older kids who are going to go out there and grab them for them, they don't have a lot of ambition to go out there and do it themselves. Other things? Or any other advice for Ashley? Yeah, I can chime in. Ben Wollion, Vernon County Land and Water. Uh, Definitely a veteran, just maybe a little bit after Kirk, but started in, in his five-county partnership up in Taylor back in the day. 
Uh, I would say, um, yeah, definitely we've been able to find if people don't want to take their own samples. Um, sometimes a well-trained neighbor kid is certainly capable of it if they're well-trained. I uh, really want to, again, just emphasize what Kirk pointed out about the partnerships. And uh, we've had a long relationship with Western Technical College now where they went out and uh, with their own funding purchased uh, a UTV with a soil probe mounted on it. Um, so that's very appealing now to our farmers who take the class. <clears throat> that did not happen overnight, but that happened with a, with a long partnership with Western Technical College. I would also say maybe advice from a veteran, you know, it's hard if you're really just like begging people to take the course and you can't find enough people to take the course. Hopefully you're in a situation where you can be a little more selective because it's just not the right fit for everybody. Um, and I would say someone unwilling to figure out how to get their own soil samples might already be an indication that they're going to be a a problem student through the whole process, maybe not, but I, we're offering them a, a heck of a deal, assuming they get the tax credits through farmland preservation and they get their soil samples reimbursed, maybe tuition or other incentives as well. It is a very good deal for farmers. Um, not everyone's, you know, not everyone's going to do their own electric work and their own plumbing and not everyone can write their own nutrient management plan. Hopefully you have the luxury of being a little bit selective and trying to tease out if you think someone is a good fit or if they're just going to be kind of nonstop complaining and, and hassle because uh, that that really is a big difference in how your program turns out. Thank you, Ben, so much. Yeah, I think ben, that for the advice. Oh, go for it, Ashley. Sorry, I just said thanks, Ben, for the advice. Go ahead. I Anne. think the, the computer portion too can be um, very troublesome for some of our, our farmers and producers. Uh, it's very intimidating for them to sit down and use a computer when they don't have one at home or they haven't used one in the past. And so I know that can be a, a huge barrier for, for, some, for some people as well. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, is, uh, Sam in Columbia County. This is my first uh, training session. Um, do you do the the uh, the veterans? Do you guys do one on one sessions with people also as in addition to a group session? Like Ben was saying, there's certain guy, people that might have a different, um, you know, might not be as good in a group s setting. So I was wondering if anyone has experience with that. Yeah, I'll kind of discuss that. Um, we really try, uh, we normally have 50 to 55, sometimes 60 farmers a year, but again, that's that's five counties. So it, it's, it's pretty busy, but we really try to encourage, first off, that they come to the group sessions, um, at least for the curriculum portion of it. Um, but we will, you know, we will go out on farm if we need to one on one to a system that way. But it's just a lot more efficient if if you can get them to come together um, and have all of your expertise there at, at one time. But we we do make exceptions. There's some people just maybe their schedule doesn't allow them to, to come in during the classes or whatever it is, and, and we'll work with them one on one if we need to. As usual, I greatly agree with Kirk. And I would say get as much batching and group done as you can. Uh, and then in general, you know, I mean, we, for example, we have a number of uh, fairly complicated vegetable operations. So that's taken some one on one uh, and even um, working with uh, DATCAP and UW folks um, on some difficult scenarios. And then, but I would say I try to reserve the one on one. Um, for kind of that troubleshooting when let's say they've done 85, 90% of the plan, but there's just uh, parts they really can't figure out for compliance or whatever. So we um, get as much done as a group just for time efficiency. And then, um, but absolutely one-on-one -on -one is inevitably uh, a, a big part of it for us. And, and I'll just say one more thing. Um, we've found over the years that it seems like 
farmers tend to like to get together because <laughs> sometimes they're isolated out there, but but it also gives them, um, when we do a lot of our trainings, we, we try to do them at the technical colleges or, well, right now at North Central Tech, we may be partnering with Mid-State, but um, farmers typically seem to like to come sometimes to school. It feels more official if they actually come into a, a, a school setting. Um, we've just found that there were sometimes, they, and it's, it's camaraderie when you get them together too. This is great, guys. Any other questions on this topic? All right, let's see what else I got in here. All right, is there one thing, or if there is one thing that you would change about the NMFE grant program, what would it be? It can be literally anything. This is where I get to take notes and, and listen to you guys. <clears throat> With fear of monopolizing the conversation, I'll, I'll go again. I know it's it's pie in the sky stuff, but I actually put in, uh, and I don't know if you've read the final report yet, Andrea. Um, but and, and like I say, it's pie in the sky because I don't know that it'll ever happen. But somehow uh, find a workable solution so that counties can be reimbursed for time put into the program. And like I say, I don't know that it'll ever happen, but we're able to um, fund subcontractors um, and, and pay them. But we're not able to pay counties, and, and again, that that's something way higher than you, I'm sure, Andrea. I mean, it has to do with state law, and things like that. But um, it would be nice if that would be changed, because the lion's share of the work in our five counties is is the counties doing doing the heavy lifting. Um, we do have MPM helping and UW Extension to some degree, but um, we are the trainers um, in in our area. So again, probably a wishful thinking. Don't know that'll ever happen, but that's you said you'd entertain any. <laughs> anything and I, I thought I'd say it. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. I do. I appreciate the comment. I am once again going to echo Kirk. It's a lot of time. It's an absolute lot of time. And um, eventually those rules kind of prohibiting reimbursing of county staff could could prevent us from continuing the program. The farmers love it. It's a real asset, but it's just sheer time. Um, I started out as, you know, the certified crop advisor, farmland preservation, managed grazing person. And now I'm the head of the department. I'm still the person who does all of that work. Um, and, and hiring another agronomist is a very long way off in, in our uh, in our forecast, but it's simple numbers, simple time. And um, yeah, I understand why those rules are in place, but it doesn't really work on the ground as well. And that, that's it, that's all I would change. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, I, I echo again that. Um, I, I also want to do commend Andrea for for you having and and taking a proactive approach. Um, we haven't had something like this in the past, a discussion. Um, so I, I think we're heading in the right direction. It can be a very wonderful program um, if if it's used to its full potential. And I think you're you're helping it ramp up. So just a kudos to you. Well, thank you. Um, one random thing that I have heard from some applicants is that um, the tuition costs are higher than what the participation stipend um, is allowed. And so I was able to get the participation stipend for the 2023 application to be bumped up to $700 reimbursement per um, farmer participant. Um, I feel like I've heard also some echoings about the soil sampling reimbursement. Um, are, are there a lot of feelings out there that, you know, you could get larger farms to be involved if there was more reimbursement for soil sampling costs? Is $750 not enough? Any thoughts on that? Yes, it does cap our larger farms and harm the participation of larger farms. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, what what we've done too to, to um, is right now we pay eight dollars per sample. We're basically saying we're paying for the testing of it because that's kind of the average testing cost, and then the in kind would be the farmer doing the sampling themselves or um, having somebody do the work. But at seven hundred and fifty dollars, it definitely that's it's about in, in our um, in our grant at 
we pay eight dollars per sample um that's 92 or 93 samples is where we max out and there's a lot of farms that, have, that need a lot more sampling than that how many people have farmers who are getting their manure um, tested and receiving a, a manure analysis stipend I'm back. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is the first year, and I, I think was this the first year it was a, a allowable expense in a grant, or maybe two years ago. This is our first time around, um, and and I've been surprised that there's not very many takers. We're gonna have to kind of hit the pavement, um, especially those individuals that have liquid manures should be sampling. Um, but we announced it at all the classes, and there, there didn't seem to be a lot, a whole lot of excitement for some reason. I thought there would have been, um, but there there wasn't. So we're gonna have to. Uh, pound the pavement and, and try to convince them. Yeah, we need to do sampling and this is a way to help pay for that. Yeah, yeah I was well, surprised. Yeah. So. Yeah, we've been doing it for quite a few years um, and you know, it's only like $15 a sample. So we strongly encourage it. And when I'm going over the curriculum, explain how it is much better than book values. Uh, you know, people don't usually do it year after year, but after, um, but you do have some enthusiasts who realize they really manage three different types of manure differently, you know, bedding pack or liquid or whatever their system is. And so some enthusiasts really like it and, and take advantage of doing multiple samples. Um, but so usually a couple people per, per season take advantage of it. Wonderful. I spent a lot of time kind of updating forms and building forms. Um, so if there's ever any feedback about um, the documents themselves, um, I'm making them easier for you guys or more fluid. Uh, any comments there would be greatly appreciated as well. But I don't want to sit here and waste all our time on this question um, unless someone else has another suggestion. I'll jump to the next one. Right. All right, so this is a hypothetical um, situation because this ha isn't currently not being done, um, but with my edits and tweaks to the final report, it will allow me to better keep track of participants who are going through the NMFE program. With that, do you think there would be value if DATCAP were to provide you with a certificate of completion for farmers? Do you think farmers would find that reassuring um, that they you know are certified for this date of time through this date of time um, thoughts on that good morning this is deb down at southwest tech and i'm going to jump all over that one because i think i also had that in my report um, that is we've been doing nutrient management planning this grant for i don't know since 2013 since it started and i would say that is probably one of our largest logistical challenges is keeping track of these farmers um, those that have gone through the certification course and then those coming back for updates um, this year we ran into um, a few more farmers coming from the county side because the county trainings were full and it is really hard to know are they really certified to write their own plan or not so two things that I think are valuable. Um, one, if there is a centralized database that all of us can access to verify if a farmer is certified or not, that would be extremely helpful. And then the second would be, um, you know, I think there is, there is value to, I mean, not all farmers are gonna appreciate this, but at the same time, I think there's definitely handfuls out there that would, an actual paper certificate that states they are certified. We've been doing an internal certificate on our campus to all of our participants. And on that certificate, not only do we say that you're certified, but we also state, you know, you're certified through, you know, such and such crop year so that they know then when they need to be taking the full class again to be recertified. So it is a paper trail to help them understand and remember um, you know, when they need to recertify. We tell them to keep that paper right within their nutrient management file or their binder so they have it handy. So yes, I would um, I would rubber stamp that one in a heartbeat if there's that opportunity. Awesome, thanks Deb. Other thoughts or comments on this topic? 
Yeah, just briefly, Andrea. Um, so the, the certificate would come from that cap, is that correct? Yeah, Andrea. something that I would produce. And okay. um, I th think I, obviously this is a complete, you know, just new idea, but I would probably provide you with the certificate and then you could enter in the farmer's name or who knows what that looks like. Yeah, but it would list that cap that you're, you're, you're basically that cap qualified. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I like I like that idea. I think it'd be great if we could make that retroactive and and maybe give them to the people who've just completed this year. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, that is definitely something that I will work on and um, get approval for on my end, and I will be in touch about it. Okay. Thank you guys for the comments on that. All right, so the last one that I have here is kind of an interesting topic. Um, the My section that I work in, the soil and water se section, has kind of gone through um, a process of reevaluation and trying to better the nutrient management program and, and how can we continue to get nutrient management on the ground. And what we keep kind of falling back to is this topic of soil health. And so in the future, I would like to see more soil health topics or potential through the NMFE program reimbursement for uh, soil health practices or uh, a soil health test. Obviously, this is me just spewing my thoughts, um, but I'm looking for feedback on your guys' overall thoughts on if soil health was be able or was able to become more of a prominent topic in the NMFE program? Do you think that that would clutter things too much? Do you think farmers would appreciate it? Um, before I open it up to questions, I'll just state that I do already feel that people who are implementing nutrient management plans and, you know, dabbling with cover crops are really already implementing soil health practices. So I do think that soil health and nutrient management can be very complementary to each other. It's just trying to figure out how to make it complementary in a, in a program like this. So. Thoughts, comments, questions? I have thoughts right away. I'm really excited about this idea, and I think it's really what the farmers want. So a lot of this does come down to the curriculum, and I'm not really sure the direction the curriculum is going, but I think that's where you could have a lot of the benefits, possibly um, opening up the grant to allow for some, and I don't know off the top of my head what some of your better soil health and and soil life tests are, but maybe make it explicit that some of those are more eligible, you know, to do some of the soil quality um, tests. I think a much bigger emphasis on SCI, soil conditioning index, I think is often ignored, but is probably our, our best indication of, of which way we're headed. Um, if we truly are um, improving our soil or not, you know, I think it's okay to say, all right, whether it's three tons or five tons per acre, okay, that's what's allowable, but is that meeting your goals? Or what does five tons per acre of loss really mean for your land and your soil health? So some of that could really come through in the curriculum and, uh, and yeah, maybe some other ways of tracking that over time. Um, I'm definitely open to ideas, but I I, I think the, the farmers are, are crying for it and feel at least that the old curriculum um, was just nowhere near, uh, you know, it's really just NPK and soil loss, nowhere near really addressing soil health and, and they really do want it. That's awesome. Thanks, Ben. Any other comments? Okay, I don't want to keep people on if, if there isn't um, additional comments or questions, um, but I will stay on here. Um, I, if there are additional questions that pop into your head here after we kind of wrap up, um, but again, I want to thank everybody for all of their hard work on the NMFE program and helping get nutrient management on the ground in the state of Wisconsin. 
Uh, as I stated earlier, you guys are my right hand people and I could not be doing this job without you. Um, it is a huge task and I appreciate everything and all of your effort that you guys are putting into this program. Uh, I am I try my best to respond to emails as quickly as I can. So if you guys have questions, keep those questions coming. Um, I appreciate them because it helps me learn more about the program itself. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, as you start to take a peek at the 2023 uh, nutrient management farmer education application, um, you will see you know, that allowable increase in um, participation stipends up to $700. Um, you will also take note that it will be required for new NMFE applicants to go through a quick training with me, um, kind of a similar webinar. And then from here on out, I would like to keep this webinar in place. Um, so that we can continue to share ideas and ask questions and get help um, from other people who are doing the exact same things um, just across the state. So thank you guys. I will stay on and I'll keep the recording on for a little bit longer in case there are additional questions. Andrea, I've got one um, comment about uh, as I was thinking about having um, like a central database of farmers who have taken the class and you're collecting the names and stuff. One issue or um, difficulty with that is that um, th you may have a son take it one year for the farm or a, a father one year or sometimes on the checklist they'll list a farm name. So we find that in even track air and nutrient management plans when they come in, sometimes it's hard to correlate that John Smith was you know the Smith brothers farm or whatever it might be. So that's going to be a logistical issue is is how names are submitted because I even toyed around with that when I submitted it to you. What do I list the farm name or do I list the landowner name? And then those change within that four years, you know, a son may take over the farm, but I guess he's not technically qualified here. She wouldn't be qualified if they haven't come to themselves, but there's those naming issues that might be an issue, a, a problem. So I'm not sure how you work around that. Definitely something to consider. Thank you. Ashley, sorry, I just stopped sharing. So I see you have a hand up. Do you have a question? Oh, no, sorry. That's from way earlier. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm when down. I was sharing my screen, I, I wasn't able to see that. Oh, no problem. I just unmuted and started talking. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Very good training. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. All right, you guys, with nothing else, I am going to stop the recording and end the meeting. Thank you all. Yep, thank you.